Hey everyone, Vincent here from CreativeDojo.net, and today I'm here exclusively for AETouchPlus.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to recreate the Darkest Hour trailer titles coming out December 25th on Christmas Day, at least in the United States anyways. And we're going to take a look at how to recreate this trailer title, sort of. And I say sort of because the trailer title animation is kind of lacking in the original trailer, so I kind of want to add my own little spice. So it's not 100% accurate, but it's kind of inspired by the Darkest Hour. Now, if you haven't seen the trailer yet, this is what we're going to be kind of creating today. We kind of have this um, black background. We kind of have this anamorphic lens, I guess. And then we kind of have this golden orange little energy in the background that kind of kills everyone. And then, of course, we have our plain white extruded text, I believe. Very, very plain title, I have to say. <laughs> So yeah, I think that's the best part of the trailer where the dog gets disintegrated. But if you go back to the um, animation right here, as you can see, it's a pretty basic title. Not as basic as the original one, where it's kind of lacking energy, very lacking um, style, very lacking creativity. And it just kind of looks like a very dull um, animation. I mean, goodness, it has plain white text. But then again, nothing beats um, this, what is this, default shine? Anyway, let's hop into After Effects here and take a look how to recreate the trailer. So let's just take a look at what we're going to be creating today. So as you can see, nothing really too mind-blowing, nothing too complex. We kind of have our logo coming, fading in kind of like this, kind of disintegrating in. And then after a while, it kind of disintegrates out, kind of like your dog right here, kind of just, yeah. So this is actually a very simple animation to create. So let's hop into After Effects here and just take a look at how we create this. I'm going to create a new composition right here. I'm going to name this Logo because this is where we're going to place in our logo or our text. Mine's going to be 720p at 24 frames a second, 10 seconds long. Hit OK. And this composition is just going to serve as a placeholder for our logo. So this is where we're going to put our logo and nothing else. So alternatively, you can type in your own text. I have the AE Touch Plus logo right here. I'm going to drag it into the composition. So right now, nothing's really happening to our logo. It's just kind of standing still. We can make some minor adjustments like the scale. And then I'm going to make it a 3D layer. And then I'm going to create a new camera. So layer, new, camera. I'm going to call this camera. Make it 28 millimeters is fine. Uncheck enable depth of field. We don't need that on currently right now. Hit OK. And the reason why we do this is we want to create some very subtle movement, kind of this uh, slowing zooming going on. So I'm going to hit P on the keyboard to bring up the position of the camera. Go to the beginning of my timeline. Hit a stopwatch for the position. And kind of just go to the end and kind of just increase it. So it kind of starts off right here, it kind of slowly zooms in, just so we have, kind of have this subtle, somewhat tracking zooming effect, just to give it a little bit more movement. I'm also going to color correct my logo in this case because I'm going to make my background kind of this nice golden orange color, so I kind of want to color correct the logo accordingly. I'm going to bring the curves adjustment, drag the curves into the A++ logo, and make my adjustments. Of course, you can make your background green, blue, red, whatever you want. But in my case, I'm going to make it um, kind of close to the original. So it's something like this, kind of this nice gold orange color. That should be good. So now we just have our basic logo coming in. And it's color corrected. You can add your own stuff into it. But I think we're pretty much set for our um, environment now. So let's create another new composition. Composition, new composition. We're going to call this one environment. Um, same setting, 720p, 10 seconds long, 24 frames, hit OK. And this is the environment where we're going to do all of our animating, all of our environment building, and all of that stuff. So let's go ahead and create a new solid layer. Hit Control, Command Y to bring up a new solid. We're going to call this background. And I just like to do this for fun because I like to have a background layer in the back. Kind of this OCD thing. And then I'm going to create another new solid, Control, Command Y again. And then we're going to name this fractal. Make comp size, hit OK. So now we're ready to drag in the fractal noise effect. So go into your effects and presets, search in fractal. 
under noise and grain, fractal noise, drag that into the fractal solid right here. And we just kind of have our basic fractal noise. Nothing's really happening. The first thing we want to do is animate this so it's not completely static. So I'm going to go into the evolution right here under the fractal noise, under evolution. I want to hold down alter option, hold alter option and just click the evolution stopwatch right here. And then I want to type in time asterisk 100 and hit OK. And it's going to multiply the value by 100, which is going to animate our, our fractal noise automatically without having to do any keyframes. Pretty handy expression. Next, I want to increase our contrast to about 140 or so. Somewhere around there. And then we want to decrease the brightness to about negative 50. Something like that. Now we want to go down to the transform. And we want to scale this thing pretty large because it's kind of small for our fractal energy in the background. So I'm going to uncheck the uniform scaling because we want to control the width and the height individually, not linked together. I'm going to pull up the width to about 370. And then change the height to about 240. So you kind of have this really big, ugly fractal and it's okay if it's pixelated. We're actually going to make it even more pixelated by changing the complexity to about 3.2. So it's very, very basic. So now that our fractal is looking pretty great, we're ready to color correct and make this thing look, look more like energy. So we're going to drag in the vector blur effect under blur and sharpen CC vector blur, drag that in. And by, by default, nothing really happens. We want to crank the amount up to about 100 or so. And then just like that, you start to see the kind of effect that we're going after right now. It looks very, very energy-like, less as a pixelation and more of this kind of fractal energy going on. And this is what we're kind of after right here. And then to top it off, we're just going to crank up the map softness to about 22. Just kind of blend it in a little bit more. Keep in mind that this effect is kind of um, render intensive, so it might take a little while to render. So now that we have our energy set up, I think we're ready now to color correct this fractal energy. So again, we're going to bring the curves adjustment, drag that into the fractal layer, and kind of just color correct this thing until it looks kind of this nice golden color, very similar to our logo right here. So I'm just going to increase the contrast a little bit, bring up the reds, bring up the greens, and then we're going to pull down the blue. And then I'm going to bring in a hue and saturation just to kind of enhance this a little bit easier. Drag that in and just play around with the, make sure that colorize is checked and then play around with the hue until you get about the color that you want. kind of right here and then we can pump up the saturation just a little bit kind of like that and then we're going to apply a trap code shine now we are going to be using a few trap code plugins so if you don't have the plugins you can purchase your trap code plugins at redgiantsoftware.com or you can go to redgiantsoftware.com and download your free trial to follow along in this video tutorial so I'm going to bring in shine alternatively you can use CC light burst I believe it does the same thing or CC light ray and then we're going to just kind of add our own little color correction again using shine. I'm going to change the transfer mode to add. Maybe decrease the ray length. And then you can kind of see what it does here. We're going to go down to decolorize and change the midtones to a kind of a gold color. And then change the shadows to a darker kind of gold color. Again, I'm not really sure why we even bothered to use the curves and hue and saturation if we're going to color correct using shine, but it was a fun process. So now that we have our fractal kind of made right here, it looks pretty good. I'm going to set the resolution down to half. And then in the original demonstration, you can see that the fractal isn't present everywhere. It's kind of just in the center, kind of this organic energy that's kind of stealing all the electricity everywhere somehow. So we're just going to kind of mask it out a little bit. 
So let's go back to After Effects. And we're going to get the elliptical mask tool and kind of just mask it out. Hit F on the keyboard to bring up the feather properties and then we're going to just going to feather it out a little bit. Hit M M to bring up the um, mass options right here. And then we're going to increase the expansion. So rather than having it everywhere, we kind of just have it in this kind of center area and it kind of just fades off a little bit. Similar to the original one right here. So now that we have the environment set up, let's go ahead and bring in our logo. So I'm going to bring in the logo text composition. Remember this one is just the, with our logo kind of just coming in like this, nothing too basic. Now to create the disintegration effect right here, we're going to be using trap code form two. Again, you can purchase your trial at redgiantsoftware.com or you can download your free trial to follow along. But for this particular example, I'm going to be using trap code form two with the new quick maps feature. If you don't have it, you can watch another tutorial by Arn Rubinowitz where he does the same thing using layer maps with trap code form one. So, so, so let's create a new solid real quick. We're going to call this form. Hey, okay. And then we're going to search in form under trap code. Bring that in. And again, this is form two. So if you don't have quick maps, don't panic. You have form one. You can uh, watch another video tutorial on how to do this using form one. But first off, I'm gonna go down to the base form. And let's go ahead and set our base form for our uh, form layer right here. So we wanna make the size in X and Y the same as the composition size. So if you go to the composition settings, you can see that our width and height is 12A by 720. So I'm gonna make my width 1280 by 720 and this is going to fill our composition up and then I'm going to set the size in Z to 1 we don't really care too much about that and then for the particles in X we want to make the same as the size in X so 1280 for the um, particles in X and 720 for the particles in Y that way form is going to fill up our whole composition right here so we can make sure that we can cover up our whole logo right here. Next, we want to go down into the particle section right here. Maybe decrease the feather to maybe one or even zero. Size at one is good. Uh, and everything seems good right now. And we're going to set the transfer mode to normal because we don't want all the particles to add together to kind of form this uh, luminance. So we're going to close the base form, close the particle, bring up the uh, layer map. Now this is the most important part because we're going to use the color and alpha of our logo to map form. So we're going to go down to the color and alpha and choose under layer our logo and text composition. And then we're going to go and change functionality to RGBA and then map over X and Y. So right now you don't see anything happen. You see our logo again, but it's not actually our logo. It's actually form taking the form of our logo and using the color of our logo as form. So we don't necessarily need our logo comp to be on anymore. We can just turn it off and our logo will still be there. We just need it as a reference for our form layer. So now that we have form mapped to our logo, we can now kind of just blow this thing up without having to worry about our logo. So I'm going to close the layer maps and then I'm going to go down to the quick maps, the new feature of form two. And for the opacity map, I'm going to select this kind of hill type, which means our particles will fade in and then eventually fade out kind of nice and smooth. And for map one, I'm going to bring that up. We're going to select this one right here, this kind of ramp. We're going to hit the flip button, which is going to flip it. And then we're going to change this to disperse strength. Map over Y. And we're just going to keep it like this for default. We're going to be changing this later in a second. And then for map two, bring that up. We're going to choose the hill again. And then size is fine for map two and map over Y. So right now, if we animate through, nothing really happens because we don't have any disbursement going on. We don't have any of this, anything turned on except for these quick maps. 
So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go, we're gonna go down to the disperse and twist, and then we're gonna change the disperse to about 120. And it's gonna kind of cause our particles to kind of disperse as expected. And then we're gonna go down to the fractal field and maybe change the displays to about 100 or so, which is gonna cause kind of this displacement in our logo, kind of this organic kind of um, displacement. And then for the flow in X, I want my particles to flow to the right. So I'm gonna change this to about, um, let's just say 50 for now. These values are all arbitrary, so you can change them as you please. So it's looking great, and it's looking like it's dispersing, but we kind of need to animate this. We just can't keep it like this. So we're just going to go to the beginning of our timeline, and then we're going to go up to the quick map settings once again. And then for map number one, which is the disperse and strength, we're going to just hit the stopwatch for the map offset number one. We're going to change this to about 200. And then we're gonna hit U on the keyboard to reveal all the keyframes for form. We're gonna move about two seconds in, and then we're gonna set the map offset to zero. That way we have our logo kind of dispersing out right here. And then after two seconds, it's gonna come back in and kind of stay in the form that we want it to. Now for the map two, it can be quite the opposite. We're gonna start at the beginning of the timeline and then we're going to start at zero. So hit a stopwatch for the map to offset. We're going to start at zero first for the size. So we start off with nothing. We're going to go two seconds in. And then we're going to set this one to about 200. So we're essentially starting with nothing. Well, let me just RAM preview this. So as you can see, this is what we have so far. We kind of have our particles set to zero right now. And then as the particles increase to one, we start seeing our particles. And at the same time, our disbursement is decreasing. So we kind of form our logo in a very nice organic kind of way. But as you can see, we kind of have a problem here. Our logo is kind of being displaced still. So we kind of need to animate the displacement as well. So let's go back to the fractal field right here. I'm gonna maybe set this thing at 200 at default. Hit a stopwatch for the displacement. Hit U again to show all the keyframes. Go to the end right here. And then we're gonna hit the displacement down to zero. So it's gonna start off with a lot of displacement and then as time goes by and our logo's coming in, our displacement's gonna be zero. So our logo is kind of unaffected right here. And this is essentially how we create the nice uh, disintegration coming in right here. So I'm just gonna set my resolution down to a quarter. Um, the render time is kind of heavy right now because I'm screen recording. I'm gonna close form for now. I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer. So layer, new, adjustment layer. So now that we have our adjustment layer here, we're gonna call this displace. Now, even though we already have our displacement right here with form, I'm gonna kind of enhance the displacement with another third party effect, or not third party effect, but another effect in After Effects called Turbulent Displace. Really awesome displacement kind of uh, effect going on here. You can kind of see what it does here. So I'm gonna go to the beginning of the timeline, set the amount to about 110. So it's gonna affect our, our displacement quite a bit. And then we're gonna pump up the size to about 110 as well. So now that we have that done, let's go ahead and go to the beginning of our timeline right here. We're gonna hit a stopwatch for the amount at the very beginning. Hit U to show all keyframes. And just line it up with form. So about right here. Since this is the point where our logo should form, we're gonna set the displace amount to zero. So we can have this major displacement going on here, and then it's all gonna go down to zero. Now we don't want the um, the evolution of the turbulent displacement to be uh, constant either. We want it to be kind of revolving around and moving around. So again, just like the evolution for the fractal, 
we're going to hold alt or option click on the evolution type time asterisk 80 hit OK. So now our turbulent is going to be involving over time as well. Just to give it more uh, variation. Now it's starting to look pretty sweet. Now the only thing that's left to do is to kind of reverse this thing so we can kind of disperse in and then disperse out. So we're just going to highlight all the keyframes right here. Hit Control C to copy it. Move to about six seconds long. Paste the keyframes in. Same for this one. Hit Control C, copy it paste it in right here. So essentially things are fading in, nothing's happening right here. And then from this point on, we're gonna fade it out. Except we're gonna make it a little bit shorter. So about 1.5 seconds, around right there. So we're gonna copy the beginning keyframes, paste that in, copy these keyframes, paste it in. So we just have our logo fading in staying still nothing's happening from this point on it's going to fade out the same way it came in and i'm just going to do a quick ram preview so we can have that nice uh disintegrating in and then it's going to disintegrate out just like the dog now we can kind of enhance this by um selecting these keyframes right here and just going to go to i believe animation keyframe assistance easy ease which is kind of just going to ease the disintegrating in, disintegrating out kind of uh, animation going on right here. All right, so everything looks pretty great. Uh, we're going to close this up, make some room, and then we're going to do a final pass of color correction. So make a new adjustment layer. Layer, new adjustment layer. We're going to call this shine once again because we are going to use shine again to color correct and kind of color grade this. So bring in shine, drag it into the shine adjustment layer. And that's looking pretty good. Looks very similar to this. That's not what we're after. We're gonna set the transfer mode to add this time. And then we're gonna go to colorize first. Change the color to something a little more orange and gold. Maybe something like that, a brown color. And change the midtones to a gold. Maybe something like that. And then we can play around with the ray length. Maybe about 3.7. We're gonna bring in the curves adjustment. Just add a little slight contrast in there. Can make that S curve. And then we can apply a glow just to make it seem a little more hot. After all, this is an energy kind of stealing electricity and stuff. So we're gonna decrease the threshold Maybe decrease the intensity a little bit. And maybe increase the radius. So just play around with the glow until you get something that looks pretty decent. I think that's looking fine for now. Let's go ahead and add our quick little uh, letter boxing. So let's create a new solid layer. We're gonna call this letter boxing. Make comp size, hit okay. Now I'm pretty sure there's a more accurate way of creating letter boxes especially with video copilots, uh, aspect ratio kind of free plugin. But a lot of times I just use the title safe, use the mask tool and kind of just draw this very basic rough mask. Again, I'm pretty sure this is a better way of doing this and then making it to subtract instead. Turn off title safe, turn off the letterboxing, close it all up, click away. And then you kind of have your little, your letterboxing right here. So alternatively, you can go back into the logo text composition or logo composition that we did. And then you can add a CC light sweep, I believe, under generate. You can drag that in and then you can create kind of this nice little gleam that kind of crosses our logo right here. So I'm going to change the center. Hit a stopwatch for it, for the center. Hit U on the keyboard to show all keyframes. We're going to move to the end and I guess we just kind of move it over here. Something like that. So we just kind of have this nice gleam effect going on. And if you go back to the environment, you can kind of see that we have our gleam showing up right here. Just something very subtle. Maybe you can decrease the intensity. Now also in the original demonstration, in the Darkest Hour trailer, they kind of have this electric shock at the end. <laughs> Let's go to the end here. 
You see that electric shock that you just saw? Right there. You can actually easily achieve that. I'm not going to go over it in this video tutorial, but if you create a new layer and call this lightning, After Effects actually has a pretty decent built-in lightning effect. I'm not quite sure where it's under. I believe it's under the generate. Generate and advanced lightning. So you kind of have this lightning effect going on right here. We can make it underneath the letter boxing. You can kind of set the origin of the lightning. So maybe over here, set the direction to our logo right here. And you can change all the colors, the core settings, the glow settings. You can change all that stuff in this. I think the lightning looks very tacky in the original demonstration. So I'm not going to incorporate it into my animation right here. But the option is there um, for your sake. Now, real quick, I'm going to add a quick lens flare to this. Just to kind of top it off a little bit. Let's create a new layer. Control Command Y. Call this lens flare. Now, in this demonstration, I'm going to be using Optical Flares by Video Copilot. Again, another paid plugin. You can use No Light Factory, whatever you want. Um, I have a video tutorial on Creative Dojo on how to create a very nice, I guess, anamorphic lens flare in After Effects using the built-in tools. So if you don't want to shell out money for an expensive uh, lens flare plugin, this is a great little alternative. Link in the video description down below. Back into After Effects, I'm going to bring in Optical Flares drag that in i'm gonna use a preset for this quick demonstration right here so let's go ahead and look for a preset maybe the rim light and then we're going to add a streak to it hit okay something like this maybe we can scale it down like that we can change the render mode to on transparent. We're going to toggle switches, hit the modes, change it to add. So our lens flare is going to be added to our scene. So it kind of blends in correctly. We're just going to center this up. It's about there. Now we're going to keyframe the position of the flare. So we're going to make it start at the very top of our logo. So maybe about up here. So we're going down to the beginning, hit a stopwatch for the position in X and Y. We're going to move to where it kind of appears around two seconds, I believe. Just right when it finished uh, disintegrating in. So approximately at 108. And at this point, we want our lens flare to be kind of down here. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to look okay. And then we want to add some flickering to this. So maybe speed to about 40, mount to 40, randomize multiple flares. And that way we just kind of have this nice kind of transition to our disintegration. And then we can also animate the brightness. So hit U on the keyframe to show all keyframes. We're gonna hit a stopwatch for the brightness at the beginning to be zero. We don't wanna see anything. And maybe about 10 frames when it starts coming in. Around here. Maybe we can set it to 100. And then go ahead and move forward to right before it ends. And then we're going to hit U on the keyboard again to show all keyframes. Hit a stopwatch for the brightness. Go to the end of the position and set the brightness down to zero. Just gonna tweak this a little bit. And let's just do a quick RAM preview to see what this looks like. So I have to admit the animation looks pretty nice for something that we created so quickly with a very few techniques, very few concepts, very few expression and keyframes. Um, let's go over what we created here. Um, we just have our simple distortion. Everything comes in nice and organically with a nice lens flare going around. And then things distort again to kind of create that initial uh, displacement. And then it kind of just disintegrates out into thin air. So very organic, very nice, and very basic but simple and effective for something that's so simple to create in After Effects. 
So hopefully this kind of gives you a basic idea on how to use form to the new quick map features and something that you can create very quickly and easily and effectively using the very basic techniques of After Effects, using a lens flare, vector blur, as well as displacement, turbulent displace. You can create some pretty awesome animations and it's all really easy to do. And I think it looks a lot better than the original, the Darkest Hour title. I mean, in this really quick 30 minute tutorial on A-Tuts, you pretty much can create apparently a Hollywood standard um, motion title for a movie. So if you if you ever get called up for Hollywood, um, say you can at least create the Darkest Hour trailer titles, if not even better. So just a really quick tutorial on how to create the Darkest Hour trailer, uh, sort of. Hopefully this was an effective tutorial for you. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this tutorial down below. My apologies for talking very fast. This tutorial was a very basic tutorial for me, especially to record. So if I was talking kind of fast, kind of just pause through it. If you have any kind of questions or any comments you want to make, leave your comments down below on the AE Tuts website, and I'll be glad to answer them and get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot, guys. My name is Vincent Wynn from CreativeDojo.net, here exclusively for AE Tuts Plus. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next time in the next video tutorial for AE Tuts Plus. Bye, guys.